guys, once again, it is time for the Professional Goblins podcast. I'm one of your wonderful hosts, Scott Gladstein, who has a super static picture today. With me, as always, <laughs> is... Uh, Mike Myler. Hi, everybody. How you doing? And, uh... And I'm Savannah, uh, possibly to be joined by my co-host, uh, Pelly the Cockatiel. Uh, for now, you'll have to make do with Hadrian the Betta Fish. Ah, fantastic. And, uh... He's not real talkative, but, uh, he looks pretty. So. Uh... So, uh, and we have this guy, I think his name is Hergen, but, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the native tongue, Hergen is known as Stephen Rowe, um, producer nice over at, uh, Wright Publishing. Um, beyond that, Hergen, or Stephen, as we shall be calling you from now on, um, <laughs> who are you, why do they care, um, what, what is your passion, what is your problem, what is that itch you have? <laughs> uh, well, I am a, uh, writer. Uh, designer, a developer, editor for Pathfinder and Fifth Edition, mostly Pathfinder. As uh, you said, I am a pro I'm the project manager over at uh, Wright Publishing, and they're a lead developer in charge of their Pathfinder line. Uh, also, kind of sliding over into the Fifth Edition line as well. Uh, I am, in addition to that, a father, uh, a husband, and I am a civil engineer. So you know, lots of oh god, lots you, were, of hats. you were all the hats, yeah. One of them mm. hopefully being a construction one. <laughs> So, um, it's, it's been a little bit, guys. Um, we had some uh, shuffling and some moving. I know Mike and Savannah trudged on without me last week, so now you get to see my beautiful, static, non-loving face. Um, oh. Is that a new, a new York picture? No, that's actually, think... from, that's actually from, like, way back when. The uh, way back when? Okay. Yeah. But, see, uh, until I get to actually see your face, Scott, I'm going to assume that you're a robot. Uh, I, that is definitely true. <laughs> that is Hello, true. Skynet. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Um, yeah, who knew this guy net was a nerd? I mean, come on. You speak in a Russian accent? No, the, <laughs> no, the Russian accent thing is 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 broken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I think our first segment we're we're not doing the reviews unless hey Stephen send us something to review yes. that isn't super long. Okay. Yes. That's for funny. anyone who is. Just watching the show for the first time, we do a formatted show that typically begins with a review if somebody sends us stuff to review. But we didn't have anything because we didn't have a guest last week, so. When you say isn't super long, like, can you give me a framework for what that actually means? 30, 40 pages. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it will not be, of course, reviewed by us as that would be unprofessional. It will be reviewed <laughs> by several uh, anonymous people who may or may not be wearing a horse head mask and other accessories yes any resemblance is purely coincidental because that would not be professional for us to critique the, our uh, our honored guests um, work <laughs> well if, if uh you know if they're not around you're really just talking behind their back and yeah, i feel really. like that's totally okay no that's legit that's legit so um like like uh mike was saying we got the formatted show and i think the first section we're going to tackle today is going to be uh, gaming stories. Woohoo! Favorite part. <laughs> so, does anyone want? It's either this is either a story from a game that you're currently playing, or a story about a uh, lesson you've learned as a GM or a player or something. And Mike, I love the uh, holy glow you have upon your face right now. <laughs> uh, this, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you're glowing. You're positively glowing. I'm not. I, I'm I mean, are you expecting? Are you not telling us something? <laughs> Stephanie just gave me some extra baguette, and so I'm a little bit happy about that. But I mean, ah, uh, baguette. It's, uh, it's clearly, magic <laughs> item glowing baguette. Got it. Absolutely. Head so cannon accept. So speaking of uh, accepting head cannons, does anyone have a story they'd like to share with? Start us off with. I elect like Stephen. <sighs> Stephen, you've been. Um, you've I'm happy old. to go. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm actually not in or running a game right now, which is super disappointing for me. But uh, about four months ago, I wrapped up an Out of the Abyss 5th edition game that I was running. Uh, and what my favorite my favorite player character in that game was named Red. Uh, and he was a, an extra planar pirate. That's how he started off his career. I love it. Uh, on board a ship that just kind of basically just did a bunch of smuggling runs through all the various planes. But... Uh, you know, they got into all these misadventures, and usually what they do is just run away because they could, you know, plane jump with their ship. So there really wasn't a whole lot of need to stick around and fight it out. 
But, you know, after the captain retired, took the ship with him, uh, Red and his, the first mate named Gnarly Bob decided <laughs> to start start their own road show, like a, like a traveling uh, performance show based on all of the misadventures of the ship that they'd been on. Uh, but every story they naturally exaggerated to make it a lot more exciting uh, and fun for the audience to watch. It sounds a lot like so, Munchausen. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's kind of why what, what, what it brought it to mind. I was, I was looking through, I was like, Aaron Munchausen, this really, uh, really fits. But the thing, he had, uh, he had uh, I can't remember what the background is called, but essentially uh, everyone knew who he was. He was famous because of this traveling show. But the problem that he kept running into is that uh, all the stories kind of grew even in the telling and they were already very exaggerated. <laughs> so everyone thought that he was like this amazing archmage because he was the guy who was able to run the interplanar ship when really he was just the person on board who knew anything about anything and could like <laughs> barely make it function. So he had all these people just assuming that he was going to save the day and just was completely incapable. Uh, at least, you know, at the, at the beginning of the campaign. Uh, so it, it became like this uh, really fun comedic relief moment that I got to constantly insert throughout the game, including uh, I created a theme song for uh, the Gnarly Bob Adventure Hour, which was oh. based on the SpongeBob theme. Oh, no. Good. And uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, very much, yeah. So you know, they, they'd walk into a tavern, and the bards would recognize them and start up with the Gnarly Bob Adventure Hour theme. <laughs> or you know, people would people would recognize him and talk about this story, like, oh, well, you can save us because you single-handedly fought off Lolf. And you know that. <laughs> and, and what, what, what this what this taught me though, and you know, the valuable lesson that I got out of this throughout the course of the campaign is that you know, Out of the Abyss is is one of those games where there's a lot of very dark stuff going on, but there's also a lot of interjected points of uh, comedic relief, or you know, Alice in Wonderland references, and so. I, you know, it, it really drove home that value of comedic relief and how, that's you know, it, it game, yeah. Yeah, in, especially in a game that's horror and, you know, you're, you're going through the rot infested fields of the, the fungal demon lord. And it, it's important to occasionally then have a moment where you can laugh. Yes. Uh, well, now I have to talk about Habib. Go for it. <laughs> and, okay. And I will actually have something that's related too. This will be good with like a theme wow. going on. So we did um we didn't do Strahd, but we did a couple of the Adventure League adventures for in Ravenloft. And um before we started the campaign, we were like, okay, so what are we all gonna play? <clears throat> and then somebody I was like, Oh, you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be like a fat Callum Shite slaver. I'm just gonna be like a piece of shit, like right out of the Aladdin cartoon show. <laughs> like <love> <laughs> terrible human being. And then this, the Danish guy I played was like, Oh, I'll be your slave. So, he made this like brutal pit fighter guy and i made this like sleazy rogue and he ended up multi-classing into like four different things he's like a rogue wizard fighter barbarian something like <laughs> <laughs> and i like i voluntarily lowered his speed because he was just so obese so he only moved 25 feet around and uh this is kind of like the other end of the sword when you're doing horror like it's that would that was not an appropriate character for a horror game Mm -hmm. Especially with like a PC as the slave, because like that's just like Abbott and Costello in the party all the time. Yeah, there's a constant there. comedy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, what did how did he do? I mean, he's he's he he screwed a couple people over, and then he attempted to lock the party in a barn that had caught on fire after they constructed the <laughs> <Lycanthropy. laughs> <laughs> and I think he ended up getting lycanthropy too, and now he's just like a fat werewolf rolling around in Ravenloft somewhere. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Head cannon accepted. And he had a different. Oh, that was the other part of Abib. I just kept giving him names. So his final name was. Uh, hold on, it's it's worth it. It's worth it. I swear. <laughs> Fair be good. Waiting for the payout here. Where's Habib? Habib, where's your name, Habib? He's got so many names. Ah, here we go. And this is all incorrect, by the way. This is not the way that the naming conventions work over there. Habib El Armasari Ibn Forsooth Ibn Goldesi Ibn Rastfara Ibn Salim Ibn Hisari Ibn Krillir Ibn Varsad Ibn Laraz Ibn Turducken. Ibn Turducken. <laughs> okay, that was the Turducken was worth the wait. Yeah, that, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Habib. Good. Good. <laughs> but our my relationship with the the guy playing the slave that actually worked out really great. I thought that was gonna blow up in our faces, but like nah, we were tight. Fair. 
Oh. Them Swedes. Uh, he's oh. a Dutch. Dutch, okay. He's from Holland. Them or, I don't know, he's fucking Scandinavian. Them <laughs> you know, one of those Scandinavian countries. So, well, speaking of Ravenloft, yeah. uh, I know I discussed uh, last week my warlock Sempronius Daya, who has been cursed to be a good person. Oh no, how um, horrible for you. I, uh, yeah, it's pretty terrible. He thinks it's awful. Um, and so I am running a second character in that game, and I switch out in combat depending on what we need. And that character is Colette Morin, and she is a professional make sure the wizard doesn't get stabbed too much uh, <laughs> person. Hey man, that, that is a viable like profession in like the Pippi verse. Yes, yes. Well, the thing is, is that what is actually going on is that the wizard is actually, like, an elven prince on the run because he was, like, assassinating people to, like, move up onto the throne. Alfred and she And she was his bodyguard. And she's like, dude, if you get caught, they're gonna murder me, too. So, uh, I'm coming with you. <laughs> uh, and so, let's see. It's been interesting because by class, she's a paladin. Of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she took the oath of the crown because, you know, her, her family, like, there's always been a Morin for each member of the royal family, and this their families go back generations and blah, blah. And uh, so, but the whole point is, is that she is technically a paladin of Bahamut, the, pal or the yeah. platinum dragon. Problem is, is that there's another paladin of Bahamut in the party. <laughs> And we haven't played very much, so Push hasn't come to shove yet, but he's like, I forget what it is, the stereotypical, like, Oath of the Righteous or oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, the paladin's paladin. He's Lawful the one dick. that Sophronius is stuck with. <laughs> who's, like, diligently trying to rehabilitate this terrible warlock who should not be rehabilitated. Um, and so I, I feel like, uh, considering that she would choose her oath over her deity... I suspect that at some point she's probably going to turn into a shitty fighter with good saving throws. <laughs> um, but, you know, she tanks like a boss, so they, they can't take that away from me. I love it. Yep. So, Pallets could be really fun, yeah. I like playing Pallets. Yeah, no, it, it's been really great, though. Like, smite evil, it's, it's been very fun. Just remember to always keep a couple points in the lay on hands around. Because you can... No, that's... Yeah, you can dish out just one at a time. So, like, I've right. had characters that pick up Paladin level just so, like... Because we don't have a healer, and I'm tired. So I'm just like, okay, I'll take the Paladin level. <laughs> lay on hands, lay on hands, lay on hands. We can continue. Yep. Yeah, that's Moving on. half the time you do it, use it. So... Well, we had two Paladins and a Cleric, and two PCs still went below zero hit points twice in the same combat. Was that the fault it's of the really party or the crying. encounter? <laughs> well, because our GM rolled, like, all of the 20s on them mm -hmm. all of the time, I can only there's, assume there's she must have taken pity on us. Oh, dude, there was a Mist of Akuma game the other day. I got to play it, I didn't have to GM, I got to play it. And one of the characters in it is these dudes with cannons, and he fucking crit it with the cannon, which did, like, 45 damage or something. What and the awesome. samurai hadn't started combat yet, so oh, he no. just, like, he, he did the Iajitsu thing, and then he also poured his smite into it, and he also critically hit. So oh. he just, like... <laughs> Deflected the bullet by three points. It was amazing. <laughs> it was, so bad. It was this like perfect anime moment. It's like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, hey, wait, right. Scott. So yeah, Scott. What's so um a while back? I'm gonna tell a Starfinder story actually. Mm -hmm. so a while back, I mentioned uh, what is it? Uh, boomstick. A uh, Jericho boomstick Fugazi. The uh sh the shotgun wielding blitz. Fight a soldier, a Vesk Bliss soldier who is a live streamer. He live streams his adventure and has the unfortunate um, uh, battle cry of hands up, don't shoot, and then shooting people because he heard it as a child and thought that that's what the cops were yelling as a battle cry. Um, so he's our playtest character we use. So we had too many people log on and playtest with us for our Dragoon thing, which is basically animate armor space marines with a dragon theme to it um ghost haunted armor space marines think of it that way um so we had a bunch okay. of them and we had his buddy what is it like i think it was like 
I think he's, he was like 47. He's a human, or he's a robot that self-identifies as human. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's, and he had, he's an engineer, so he has the uh, streaming bot. So we had enough people, so we just pulled out them, and the plot of the playtest, such as it was, being a playtest, was devolved into... So last time, he went to this agency and a bunch of goblins attacked and yada yada, destroyed security bots, etc., etc. This time, he went back to the, secu the, the, the promotion agency to go ahead and try to get another meeting with these people. And, of course, one of the goblins from the last encounter rolled oh, no. in and said, you killed my friends, and, like, sets off a bomb. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the, we, everyone else went first, and the guy in the power armor with the heavy weapon just nuked the hell out of the, the goblin and oh, it no. went off by itself and oh, no. then the security bots attacked us and thought we killed everybody and we had a murderously good time and the funny thing is they I were mean, all good you know. they, they were all of and it was all live stream and yes, yes it was all live stream <laughs> by two cameras what's the rating on that live stream uh it is not pg-13 um no no and they spent half the time trying to resurrect npcs while the uh, player, with no way to do so, don't have any ranks in medicine. So they were also, they're like, no, live! Because they're kind of paladin. <laughs> no! And, um, I, I saw CCR like, nope. on TV one time. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, because they're all of different, like, imagine, like, it's called orders. They're like, they're, they're like orders, imagine them, but they're all very thematically different. Um, so, in, like, different branches of the military, and none of them can heal whatsoever, and, and the security bots just straight up attack us. Um, and that was that was fantastic. And then we had this thing where we were defeating, fighting a bunch of, uh, I think they were like, they're lizard men, like the like the, the V-style lizard men. Oh, good. Like, and one of them, one of the NPCs on the, on the thing was named Not a Dragon. <laughs> and they, they're like, I bet you it's a dragon. I'm like, I'm like, well, it's not not a dragon. <laughs> and uh, they killed it. It's not wrong per se. Well, we, we were doing like high level test, like above CR and below CR testing for that. So that was the way above CR thing. So they killed it in like one round, and it summoned like a young blue dragon. And it's like I think CR nine and nine or ten or something. And they're like they were like level four, like like four to six. I think they were six. But still, oh, good. it was in an enclosed area with a dragon, and you know about how well that ends up. And the only way we could deal damage was by critically hitting. Mm. Like, okay. We could deal a little bit of damage, but the only way to significantly drain HP was to do that. And we, I think they ended up, we ended up defeating it, excuse me, defeating it by like eight crits. <laughs> but only Boomstick okay. and the, uh, oh no, yeah, it was Boomstick and the... Uh, Skullwatch Grenadier, I think. Anyway, Boomstick at the end was getting destroyed, and he was just like, Alright, guys, now hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to see me die, go ahead and vote in our thread. It's, uh, it's coming up. I want to see what the voters think. Should I die, or should I live? Go ahead and vote. And it's like everyone just, like, hits the, like, all the other players are, like, typing in, like, the chat. Like, hits, hits the like button for the, that... And then he's like, you're all sick fucks. I didn't know you wanted to see a uh, snuff film live on uh, YouTube, but uh, it's not going to happen. And then he just gets one rounded and we're like, all right, ratings going through the roof, man. So um, the legend of uh, Jerrica, or was it uh, Boomstick is good. He is such an under-optimized character. He is so wonderful. And uh, I hope to play test the hell out. Many more games with him at six level until we don't need six levels anymore. But, um, there we yeah. go. So that is the continuing legend of Boomstick. <laughs> All right. No uh, relation I'm to the legend like, of Korra? No, not in any way, shape, or form. Okay, good to know. Okay, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna do this. All right. So uh, next subject is favorite working projects. Uh, I've just been in the weeds with Book of Exalted Darkness, so I don't have anything new to talk about, unfortunately. I just spent, uh, what did, what did I do? What did I do? What, where was I last week, Savannah? Do you remember I had just finished all the continents, right? Yes, and you were, like, insisting on naming all of the rivers and I mountains. I do. I am going to still. I just have to go back and do it, and I wanted to go through everyone else's stuff first. And everyone wrote great stuff to you. 
I thought you were um, going to say naming the rivers like something obscene, but I'm like, oh, okay, just writing the No, river. I just yeah. got to name them, and there's a shitload of like rivers and forests mm -hmm. and glades and all that. I gotta... Because Mike does not love himself enough. I don't. Um, let me see. What was the highlights? He Luis just loves his rivers more. Ass. He figured out uh, this like dark transformation prestige class that's only eight levels. So and this is for 5e2, so it's not like, you know, it's a little weird to do prestige classes. They don't have any. And so you can, there's a way that you can make yourself into like a lich dragon or a rakshasa construct if Ooh. you are Steve, very selective. Steve, you got to go next. I got something from that Werepower book, man. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. Oh, I, uh, I've got about 15 different stuff going on um, at any one time. You know, Mike, are you done? So, Mike, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. It's oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, like uh, as Scott said, he is working on a vampire werewolf book for me uh, through Wright Publishing, which I'm really excited to see what he comes up with. Uh, I'm also working on the Fairy Ring Magic Guide. Uh, I believe I'm working on that with Savannah. Um, I just turned over a bunch of writing for that. Uh, then there's a bunch of other stuff just through Wright Publishing, like uh, in the Company of Vampires, we're going to do an expansion, uh, maybe turn into a Kickstarter at some point. Uh, we're going to do, we're doing in the Company of Valkyries and the Company of Fiends. Um, I've got a cool uh, Demi Line Outer Planes uh, series that we're working on that should be coming out soon. So, you know, lots of stuff in any one time. Uh, I've got a Starfinder Adventure Path that I'm working on with AEW Games uh, that I'm really, really enjoying uh, getting to, to work on. Uh, that's that's just been a lot of fun for me. And, you know, it helps me to get a better handle on Starfinder in general, uh, you know, the, the, the motivation to really dive into the rules. So just, just one thing to comment on that. Mike, you were talking about the various Draco, Lich, this, that, and the other thing. Mm -hmm. um, most of the book is dedicated to the, the Werepire stuff, but there's a section called Other Pyres? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course there is. <laughs> um, and it includes a reference um, to a, uh, I think it was like a Draco Pyre, but then it talks about like anthropomorphic things, so like they're like bat things. So it ends up talking about. Yeah. I, I have a I have a parenthetical like in there that talks about uh, like what would happen if you did it with two cans or a whale or something. So theoretically, <laughs> you're an anthropomorphic whale vampire or something, or a two can vampire. Like, it's uh, good. Yeah, I, I I think we need to to also specify that this is this is probably going to be the first book in a line that's specifically supposed to be. You know, a little, little out there conceptually, and you know, having, having a little fun with the game. And <laughs> most you know, of it is vampire. serious. There's also the <laughs> yeah, yeah. To the wear two can. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, but yeah, the, the book will have wear two can, and that's totally okay. All right, and it I'm, can. I'm, I'm standing up a character fun. now, you know. Yeah, right. I mean, like, you, you do a one off, and you just want to play some sort of wacky character. I mean, yeah. it doesn't. You, you can have a little fun with it, and you can, you can not have to stress out about everything being you know, so, so mired in, in the classics. Yep. So Savannah, uh, what, what are you on today? Uh, so there's the, um, oh, Scott Gable and I have been talking, might be doing some development uh, on the magic guide for the fairy ring. Um, that sort of thing. I'm not honestly looking to take on a lot of jobs right now. Um, ideally, uh, I'm going to be on indefinite hiatus after I, wrap up all my current projects oh. so we'll see how that goes oh, burnout it's a hell of a drug yep mm -hmm. i have um let's see we released aug base class aug um then we did we're working on a new alternate path book it's, we did alternate path marshall 2 um we released that and we went man we're writing all this great content for this this potential deity book Oh, wait, this is definitely all Path Divine 2 shit. So now we're tossing things together for that. Uh, we got a Starfinder module coming up. Or, sorry, Pathfinder module. Maybe a Starfinder. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, Mike, it is the goddamn The Raid, the, 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 yeah, The Raid, but an adventure module. <coughs> and it's thematically coherent, Mike. I'm sorry, what's The Raid? What are you talking about? You Wait. You've never seen The Raid? Is that the movie with the District 13 kind of thing? And they got to go into the... the it's the Pol it's an Indonesian, Polynesian... Uh, not, not Polynesian. It's the uh, Indonesian uh, martial arts film where they go into the... Uh, we talked about it on the show. The uh, Where they go into... 
the crime uh, lords like building and they have to like fight yeah and then the the, the the one that came out of the, the district 13 i think was the sequel and then they made a sequel no, to the no, sequel. no 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 that's that's different it's different yeah that's the part you're thinking of the parkour one this is the like the indie action film from indonesia that got district 13 is from is is, is a french film Hmm. I don't know if I remember seeing this. Oh my god! You gotta go watch it. It's it's this crazy kung. Fu, it's not kung fu, but it's like it's like kung fu, but if it was like in Indonesia, and they came out with a sequel, which is completely unrelated to the first one, except it has the same cast and is like unbelievably good. I sat in a theater watching it myself and felt like such a pretentious asshole watching a foreign film, but it was <laughs> wonderful and amazing and bloody and gory. And there's a chick who fights with two hammers and. There's a dude <laughs> who wields a baseball bat like a samurai sword and incorporates the ball into the, the into his martial arts. I don't know, dude. I'm okay. cool. But yeah, no, uh, I, I, we're writing one of them that's... Um, basically, you are the lawman breaking into the bastion of Baron Baldwin, who is the biggest crime lord in the world and basically owns an entire dis region, and everyone who's just a criminal gets to chill in his place for free because no one wants to fuck with him. They basically right. act as bodyguards, and you have to go up the, uh... There's also something called the Doom Elevator in it, which is kind of great. We're, um... I'm still playtesting the, uh, Escape from Cleveland 2099 thing, but that's gonna be Pathfinder and Starfinder. And then if it's in... If you happen to be playing Starfinder, then in, instead of being, you know, in Cleveland, it's on some, like, world-blasted moon, and it's just desolate there, and it's all it's the all same, Neo, basically. Neo, Neo, Cleveland. Down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, I mean, Cleveland 2099 is a lot like, you know, uh, Escape from Los Angeles. Yeah, or Escape from New York. Yeah. 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 All right. Anyway. So, um, what's up next? Stuff that we are not working on and can't profit from that has come out, but is cool and people should know about. Um, let's see. I'll go. We, uh, we talked about it at one point. It was uh, Red Shirts. Yeah. Yeah, they Ooh. finally released it. Um, what, Comedic Starfinder Adventure. Yeah, if they released the first part of it, it was uh, there's a line in there. I want to see what it is. Yeah, the index included a uh, section called Encounter. Roid Rage Chihuahua is on page 14, <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm sold. Nothing else, man. Just yeah, that's good. Pretty solid. But yeah, it's obviously a comedic uh, Starfinder adventure, and it's in a few parts. Mm -hmm. I think I wasn't blown away by the formatting they could probably hire someone better for it but i mean solid content solid content so give it a look all right well i will prop up uh, a touch of class which is available now in print i didn't write all like half of this i wrote like less than half of it and i don't get any money from it it's just really good and uh if you're looking for cool additional 5e classes you will find several of them in there uh, I think the one that stands out is probably the card caster. Mm. Yes. And the stuff I wrote is cool, but the card caster is pretty dope, and getting to use a tarot deck at the table is pretty dope. So, gotta give it up for that. That's fair. Yeah. So, Sabrina, you got anything? Mm. While you stitch it yourself. I was gonna say, I am I am uh, behind myself, so I will, I will pass the baton here. The weird thing is I'm actually baton. holding the baton in my hand right now, but you can't see it. Like, literally. Jeez, guy, you're such a tease. <laughs> it, it's a really nice baton. Anyway. <laughs> uh, for you guys don't know, uh, I'm actually working at a magic and toy company as, like, the assistant to the CEO, so I have all this magic props and shit in my room right now. And I'm That's like... See, cool. we told you that he was kidnapped by magicians. I, I told am literally... You. Despite not being able to do any magic, I am literally, professionally, a magician's assistant. I mean, you know, being able to do magic isn't uh, required when you're the assistant, is it? No, not really. <laughs> but, um, but everyone else Have they cut you in half yet, or? <laughs> no, no, but I, I, am, I am the guinea pig for all their new tricks because I don't know the first thing about doing magic. So they end up like, <laughs> like, all right, all right, try this, try this. And then afterwards, I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. And then they're like, at the end, they're like, all right, well, you're using a pink, you're using your pinky there to divide that. And you're doing this and that. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. It was cool. It was magic. <laughs> there are I'll believe. Who used to live in my next to my desk and a rabbit. Scott's and stuff taking like his time retraining into sleight of hand. Seriously though, they, they <laughs> told happening. me they'd teach me. I'm I'm down for it. Are you like distractingly attractive, like to the point where it helps the magician perform the trick because God, no. you're you're drawing the audience's eye? Uh, I'm I'm very intellectually pretty. 
they pretty you up they get some get some like uh, eyeliner and like what's that what's that stuff that's all the different colors eyeshadow eyeshadow some bright yeah. eyeshadow um, to bring I'm out i'm just your, pointing it out there the everyone looks better with a little bit of eyeliner all right i will make sure to do that um i will go put on that while i sit at my cramped super tiny desk um dealing with phone service issues absolutely what about you steven you got one for everybody to go check uh, out uh, upon looking at the outline again, it looks like the uh, the one that I had is a Kickstarter, so I'm I'm happy right. to to oh, pull off on that till later. Okay. So um. Duh, 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 duh. Pathfinder and Starfinder news and speculation. Ooh. Well, I'm speculating that Ultimate Wilderness, Ultimate was it Ultimate Wilderness or whatever it came out. Mm-hmm. I have not had a chance to read it. Wait, I have not read. either. I've heard some people being sort of side eyeish about uh, what is it, the shape changer? Yeah. yeah, the shifter I hear is getting getting a lot of a lot of something lot of about the hawk aspect flash. getting like sixty feet of blind sense. Yeah. Whoa. And then the back oh, is like. <laughs> I feel like that's got to be a mistake. I hope so. Yeah. So it kind of killed me when that book came out because we had literally we were like two weeks away from releasing uh, Alt Path uh, Primal, which is basically the same book. Oh no! So we oh. like they announced it like it's coming out in a month or two, and we're like, "Fucking really!" All right, well, we're gonna release our shapeshifter class, and god damn it, you put it out. Are you serious? Are you serious? So, um, <laughs> oh, so I, I'm a, I'm a little bit yeah. harumphy about the book. I'm like, really? Come on! So uh, I I may take some time to buy that book, but um, otherwise, it let's is, see. It is almost impossible to stay ahead of that stuff i, I mean like it, it's just a matter of time until it constantly happens well yep. what my favorite example was um before the apg came out we were really we released a book or maybe it was right after the apg came out which was anti-paladin and anti-paladin was in apg right apg yeah, yeah. So yeah. right after yeah. apg came out we worked on an anti-paladin book and put out a bunch of archetypes for it and then it was an Ultimate Combat or Ultimate Magic came out, and they were like thematically the same ones we put out. Mm. But it was totally, it's, it's totally convergent design. But I'm just like suspicious. No, it, it, I understood what it like. It's like the undead one, the infernal one. You know what I mean? But it was like yeah. I mean, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. only so many ways Nothing that you can be an anti paladin. Yeah, too. yeah. But I was like, mm, you know, <laughs> I see what you're doing. You're looking over my. You're looking over this and copying off my thing. Um, Warehouse raptors are stalking me. Yep. Um, we're Ooh, not gonna... See, the secret, Mike, is muffins. You have to feed them muffins. I see. Hey, I survived in the warehouse for three months. <laughs> I know these tricks. Take it from Savannah, she knows. It's true. Got the inside beats. Savannah, did you feed them... Uh... Popcorn as well? Or is that what a chain is for? Uh, no, this is for my tiny dinosaurs. Well, okay. also for my Christmas tree. Both are acceptable. You know, I just got so fond of the, the warehouse raptors, I had to had to get some tiny dinosaurs. So, uh, let's, let's move on to 5th edition, Mike. 5th edition news and stuff. Um, Xanathar's Guide to Everything came out. Is it ah. out? I know we keep talking. We keep, I think we've mentioned it like five <laughs> times. Yeah, uh, the companion on DMs Guild came out as well. Uh, what else? Oh, I didn't realize that there's a Magic the Gathering adventure that came out. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's called X Marks the oh. Spot, and the image, if you guys want to click on it, is a dinosaur in badass armor. So, a man riding a dinosaur sure. in badass armor. I thought it was a cyborg dinosaur to begin with. Or a robotic dinosaur, and I was very disappointed when I realized I don't think it was. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like that would have been more compelling, but I will accept someone riding a dinosaur in badass armor. I guess. Oh yeah. Press your arm. I guess. That's great. Suboptimal. It's got feathers. That, that just that makes me happy. Okay. Yeah. No, that that is fine. <laughs> they they get they get those points back because it has feathers. I think it's really funny. What's that image? It's like. Skeleton doesn't actually tell how like heavy set you were, so you, you <laughs> right. don't actually know if dinosaurs yeah, yeah. were like like super Giant beefy chicken. or like super skinny. Um, yeah, like they could just be bloated, like giant circular things that kind of rolled around more than they walked. 
like giant plump chickens. Yep. Totally down with that. Yeah. Oh, head cannon accepted. I think, Mike, yep. I think the name of this episode has to be Head Cannon Accepted. Um, yes. Um, a little confused about wait, wait, wait. You're saying that you that that there they couldn't have told anything about volume or mass of dinosaurs from their skeletons? Well, they can tell a certain degree, but it's like mm-hmm. they can't tell with any degree of accuracy the full like how much something actually weighed. You can tell like the max capacity of what something like that with a skeletal structure could. Support. Sure, but I mean, we know that sharks and alligators haven't changed, so I feel like we have good examples. To... Well, that's where we're ba- that's where we're basing all the stuff on. Um, all right. But I'm saying the, the thought experiment is technically we don't have data that proves disproves it. It's like you have to prove the hypothesis and disprove the null hypothesis. We're not disproving uh-huh. the null hypothesis here. Okay. Yeah. The known unknowns. Yep. Let's go right. say so, careful, Mike, you will pry this this round dinosaur head cannon out of my cold dead hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. anything else? Uh, something about oh uh, well I guess it doesn't count for five E the Neverwinter Nights stuff. Um, Go ahead. Sort of five E adjacent. We'll talk about it in the next thing. Uh, looks like they've got some some figures for D and D out now again. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hey, they're sexy looking. I guess they yeah. Are. Pretty good. So, and that sounds weird, but like people are like, oh, this is a great mini. I'm like, you know what I want out of a mini? I want to be able to use it for fifty different things. Like, I have a stack of minis that I've been using since, like, middle school, and I'm pretty sure some of them are made of lead, and I probably shouldn't play with them. But, um... <laughs> no, seriously, If you don't from... put them in your mouth, you're yeah, probably... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a five-year-old, and I have to put everything in my mouth, damn it. Um, <laughs> study the world. You're a five-year-old, five-year-old robot. <laughs> but, yeah, the, uh... But, you know, I've, I've played the same one since, like, I think they were, like, my parents, like, for something else. And I just, they were like, oh, yeah, we have some of those things. When I didn't have any minis, I'm like, oh, okay, we'll use these. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're, like, lead-based or, like, something toxic. Like, maybe just made of arsenic. They're just solid arsenic. They're, as a bonus, <laughs> they're slightly radioactive. <laughs> they're, just, they're just asbestos, like, given form. Yes. <laughs> We used to play with these and use them to season our foods. <laughs> yum, yum. All right. So um, do we want to talk about other RPG business before we I go into a asbestos, you know, induced, you know, rant? Yeah. Uh, Owen posted uh, about roles in the tabletop industry, and you also posted about roles in the tabletop industry. Yeah. So when you were introducing yourself, Stephen, uh, I actually was mm-hmm. like, all right, it's interesting. I was trying to see what title you'd use because we as an industry, so if you guys don't know my background is, I was, uh, my undergrad is actually in game production. So we actually have like some like academic stuff here. Like what are the names of the, am I, I have an MBA and I'm like from game dev. So it always interests me very much to see like the organizational structure of game companies mm-hmm. and what titles we use. A lot of them are pretty flat. Um, and we all wear multiple hats, but like what, do, Steve, if I had to ask you right now, what would you say that the, the titles are you use for people at your company? Uh, project manager, uh, developer, uh, editor, uh, and then and then we refer to you know and then there's writers and designers, so, freelancers. So you, how do you define developer? A developer is the person who's uh, setting the content expectations, who's reviewing uh, rough drafts, final drafts, uh, making any sort of final calls on on the content. And making sure that uh, uh, mechanical clarity, thematic uh, consistency is, is kept. That's actually pretty close. Your, what you said was pretty close to what I had. Mm-hmm. I, I think I would I, add, like, specifically a role similar, and this could be covered in what you said, but a role similar to an editor, but for math. Yep. Yes. Um, I actually wrote it down in the, I broke it down as, um, let's see, it was, um, this producer, which is project manager, uh, developer, which I actually use the same term, which is pretty much what you described. When I use designer, I, it's like designer, insert thing here. It's kind of what you're talking about with writer. Mm-hmm. So it's like, this is a mechanical designer. Their job is to be a mechanic, or like it could even be an editor. Like mechanical editor is a thing, you know, like, so it's like you have a pre, you have a, like, you have something preceding the designer or the, um, or the editor part of it, because that just kind of works a little bit nicer, I feel like. 
and everyone wears multiple hats, so it doesn't really matter. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm usually developer and editor, uh, yeah. because, you know, as I'm going through, I'll just, I'll be doing edits to, to language while also doing edits to mechanics, and it's one's developer, one's editor. When we had two people, we would edit each other's shit before going out to our external editor. So it's like, Scott, what's your, I got an editor credit once. Yeah! I should not have <laughs> Yay! <an editor> <laughs> Actually, that yeah. book is pretty well edited, if I can say so myself. Well, there's, there's, you know, the, the gaming industry editors, and then there's, like, actual legit editors, and <laughs> there's, a, there's a, I feel like, a, a decent divide between those yep. two uh, skill sets. We, uh, I got lucky. I got a guy who has a game dev background, but is a professional editor, and he's also mm -hmm. a good good buddy of mine, so uh, I, I lucked out with that. He works at yeah, Barnes & Nobles around the all day. That's an awesome, awesome resource for you to have. I, I'm, I'm never giving out his name. You can never contact him. His name mm -hmm. is Ian Sisson. He's fantastic. I'll, I'll just buy a book and look him up. No, no. Ian, <laughs> like, like Ian Sisson, I, he gets credit, right? <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to have Ian Is he Sisson edited under show. an alias? No, no. He, Ian's my buddy. He's on the show. I want to get him on the show as man, but he's, like, very, like, I don't want to say antisocial, but he's just like, I don't want to. That sounds like a nightmare to me, being on, on the air with somebody. So uh, I don't think we got him yet. We got Christos on, but. Um, let's see. Any, anything else, uh, Mike? Um, mm, I I don't know. I don't really have anything to say about it. No, no. I mean, like in the uh, other RPG news. Oh, um, specifically RPGs. I can't think of any from the last week that stood out. But like I said, I've been kind of in the weeds, so. So no, My let's move on. And away. <laughs> Other media of interest. Before I forget, I do have something for here. Uh, the Neverwinter Nights, they're they are retooling Neverwinter Nights over at Beamdog, which I'm super yeah. excited about, because Neverwinter Nights is fucking amazing. Yeah, man. I played them forever. Reminds me of, like, <coughs> Neverwinter Nights and Dungeon Siege were, like, my crack for a while. Mm. I hope that the online community for Neverwinter Nights kicks off again, because, like, yeah, man. there were people who set up servers for, like, all of Men's of Bronze and stuff, and, like, <laughs> oh, that'd be dope. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and then you have other stuff to talk about. Yeah, so uh, Disney bought Fox. That's a thing. It's a big thing. That's a thing, all right. So yep. what, one thing that I noted early on um, is, so this gives them a controlling stake at Hulu. Like, it was divided. Oh. If you guys don't know, Hulu was basically created by a bunch of the big studios to be their streaming service as, as a, a neutral meeting ground, almost. Yeah. Um, so not, not anymore, huh? <laughs> yeah. So it was yeah. Like Disney, Fox, ABC, and I forget who else. Um, maybe Paramount. Anyway, the um, with the merger, it gives them a controlling share. And in 2019, Disney is launching its own media platform that's combining all of its existing ones. Right. So the question is, are they going to poison the shit out of it, or are they going to like divide their content on it? And the answer from Disney seems to be a very, very vague, non-committal. Well, we're probably gonna put more adult-oriented content on Hulu and more kid-oriented, or at least family-oriented, or at least not expressly adult-oriented content on um, their own platform. Hmm. But I don't know. And they spun off some of uh, Fox's TV properties, so they'll probably be on their own thing. But yeah, they could totally tank it now if they want. Oh, yeah. It also means, hey, guess it, what? The, the motivation. Yep, yep. Who owns Crackle? I have no idea. I'm not sure that I know what Crackle is. It's another streaming Yeah, service. I don't either. It's, uh, they had Seinfeld on it for a while, but they also have a Super, Super Mansion, which is like the robot chicken guys made their own Justice League, oh, and Brian Cranston. Oh, oh I love so Super Mansion. I thought it was uh, funny. I watched the pilot, and I'm like, this is so trite and like overdone and like... Every you were joke. upset about the Batman character, I think. No, I don't fucking care about that. Okay. Dude, I, I, I give Batman them points for the name. No, I oh. thought it was. I thought it was <laughs> it's like every every joke was just like clever. Was like not clever. It's like every joke I saw coming a mile away. I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, uh huh. It's the same joke fifty times. Got it. What did you expect? It was the robot chicken people. I mean, here, they, the thing with the robot <laughs> chicken people. Like, what did you want to walk in? Yeah, like, yeah. It was a skit <laughs> show, though. Like. If it's a six-second joke, ha, okay, cool, that's funny. 
and like you got some creativity, but it's like you gotta sit with the same skit. It's like it's like a robot chicken skit. No, it's just strung along like, the backbone like of like old Silver Age comic tropes. Yeah, but like it's like a robot chicken that like six second skit that went on for sixty minutes by accident. Oh, it didn't go on for sixty <laughs> minutes. The, the, so the, about the... Patreon. <laughs> so about Patreon. <laughs> Mike, uh, I hear you have strong opinions on this. I don't. I I just don't. I I've, I've never had a Patreon because I don't. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with the model, uh, so I don't have one. Um, I was thinking about starting one before all of this nonsense, and now I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not going to. Yeah, apparently they rolled back the whole like fee edition because there was so much backlash and so many yeah. creators leaving and all that. So, so something weird about Patreon. Do you guys know um, Pomplamoose? It's like a band. Yeah. It's on YouTube. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. gorgeous Type music go check product. it out um one of the guys who is in that actually started patreon or one of the founding members of patreon jack dante he's on the uh he's on that letter he wrote that letter that said like we're rolling everything back uh, but it's kind of weird that a youtube creator made it but we have a patreon we don't use it for much um we have a weird model we set up which is like hey look give us at least five bucks it's basically a pre-order for everything and you'll get every product we put out with the exception of like a kickstarter or something and if it's below cool. 15 pages, you get it for free. Um, and we can basically use that as a like art budget for small books. Like, hey, we're gonna get 50 bucks. All right, I'll put 50 bucks towards art for this little, you know, book. And guess what? We we're gonna go out, you know. Um, or 100 bucks for what towards art or whatever it is. We never get a lot of traction on it. I mean, it's probably I think we're at like 50 bucks or something a book, which is it's not bad. It's like, hey, I get an extra 50 bucks. So. We post well, we it it, it seems like it provides a very valuable service to an awful lot of artists that you know are yes. depending on it for a significant chunk of their income. It's just, yep. you know, they, this this kind of pounds home the point that we need to kind of figure out a backup plan in case they pull this sort of malarkey again. Definitely. Which is unfortunate because Patreon is a backup plan for some people already. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I know YouTube creators like when the whole demonetization stuff went out and they're like yeah no like if we were just relying on youtube we couldn't do this anymore so that patreon link i support yeah. a few of those yeah uh another thing related to that was they had it's called gif.party and i swear to god it's not a porn site um <laughs> i don't um, believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's go that's type it in go point. type it in no um gif.party is a site where people have been like stealing people's patreon shit and posting it there um, My money is that it began as like one of those furry illustrator sites, because uh, I understand there's a, there's a, lot, a there's huge a of, market for that. There's a lot of uh, very adult content on the site right now. That's what they get targeted as most. Um, yeah. And it's really I don't know that for a fact. It's just if I had a bet, like, it seems likely. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's yeah. a good theory. There's a lot of different weird things. There's a thing called Patreon for Nazis. Really? Um, yeah. And okay. Then Kickstarter's starting thing, yeah. I think Chris Cantwell got like ten thousand for his legal defense through that. That was the jackass in Charlotte. And then, um, uh, what's the oh Kickstarter starting one soon called D dot R I P, so mm -hmm. drip. Yeah. Which I might yeah yeah be interested in, but we'll see. I don't know. I I always feel salty about Patreon because. Whenever I applied to college back in 2010, they're like, okay, what's what's your ambition? You know, what's your bigger picture thing? And basically, and this was to the um, scholarship board and all this. And basically, my pitch was Patreon. <laughs> and then, like, you know, obviously not going to get this done immediately. 2013, Patreon happens. And it's just like, mm -hmm. well, damn it. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, I guess that had merit for someone else. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, okay. Well, does anybody have any other parting thoughts on Patreon? Go support ours. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might have one so we can uh, pay yeah, yeah, for yeah. hosting the podcast somewhere. Uh, but. Someday, maybe. We'll figure it out. If anyone has suggestions for a Professional Goblins Patreon, we want to hear them. So, yes, email us or message us or something. Uh, 
Uh, oh, well, no, we were going to talk about the Punisher. That's oh, right. Yeah, they're of interest. So I really liked it. My only caveat and spoilers, everyone. Did you? Did, did I don't want to ruin it for you, Stephen? Did you see the Punisher? Are you going to watch? Uh, it? I, I'm about two thirds of the way through. I think Me I'm too. in the same boat as Scott. Okay. Uh, well, I won't ruin the end for you guys. I did. I thought there wasn't enough like gruesome gangster killing. Like, what the fuck? This is the Punisher. Like, I, I, there was like 13 dudes he killed in the first episode that were gangsters. And then he like rolls around un- knocking people unconscious and like shooting them in the foot. Like fuck that. Like the Punisher should be dunking people into chrome machines. Like what the fuck? I, yeah. So I'm going to give a like. <laughs> I enjoy it. There, there's a butt kind of thing. Um, I am not the person this was aimed at. I like my superheroes pulpy. I like them with powers. I like them to do the thing. And I always feel like Punisher is really, really interesting when he's put in contrast to other super, to like super powered individual because he's he's literally the that can be very interesting. I'll certainly yeah. admit that. And yeah. I felt like when he beat the Hulk. That was the best. I feel like they missed a huge opportunity, and this ended up just being a really overly violent, if not like like Mike said, not as bloody. Um, that's what it should be way yeah. better. And how this Absolutely. is the first season, man. Like you know, they they intend to do more than one <clears throat> no, season. No, I, I got it. Like but the other is, like, this isn't even his time. first appearance, though. I mean, we had him versus, with Daredevil, and like you no, know, but he then he was in the then he was hanging out with Daredevil, do it competing with a superhero Which like I he wanted. Was fine, I thought that was kind of interesting. And then, so, but like had... to set the tone for the character and his story, like you needs you need to no, do I that. I got it. I got it. But like my favorite scene with him is with um is with the Runaways. Molly Culkling with super strength, yeah. just like gut. Pu- he gut. She gut punches him, and he nearly dies because he- she's like, "I thought he had superpowers." And this adorable little girl. Whoops. Um, and she's like crying, apologizing. I really like, liking Runaways. What? <laughs> um, I I said I'm I'm really liking Runaways. That's that's been a lot oh, of fun no, so far. Don't, um, don't. I I agree with everything you guys are saying about the Punisher. Um, I I it seems as though they're they're trying really hard to set up uh a larger story and really create a foundation for it and they really did uh, try to pound home the violence in the first episode uh, but yeah it, then it kind of flagged off but maybe that's just where they're going to get back to it later on or they're they're you know using this as an opportunity to introduce all these characters that can then later on grow into something more yeah like, um, like iron fist um, what i'm worried that we're not going to get to see like proper frank castle bloodbaths which is upsetting um one thing mm-hmm. i will note is i like the way it depicted um you know, military life and the effects of PTSD and whatever that worked out very yeah. well. They handled that very. I mean, if anything, the Netflix series are really good at dealing with. It's addressing the kind of elephant in the room in terms of social issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, and maybe that's why they they backed off of the the gun violence. I was just a thinking. Bit. Yeah, they're like, oh, we probably don't want to have a bunch of him like just like gruesomely destroying people and then like cut mm-hmm. to due to PTSD. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, he's going after a lot of uh, people who are in the military or ex-military and he's got a really, they, big, they justify big, big him being, for, non-violent, you know, but, or, well, I mean, not killy violent anyway. They're, they're, but, they're just doing their jobs. I don't want to kill someone who, who's, who believes he's doing the right thing. And that's how like, I kill bad guys too, but like, uh, I keep, I want, where, where, where were you killing the bad guys, Frank? <laughs> where and when? Why did you stop? Like, uh, I don't know. I know. It felt like an action movie rather than a superhero movie or show. You know mm. what I mean? And, that, well, and that's, I mean, again, not a superhero stuff. That's good. I understand, good. but he sits in a superhero universe next to superheroes doing the superhero thing. And that, what makes him cool is that he's just this crazy motherfucker with guns. And I love that about he's, him. He's the again, Batman character. He just runs yeah, around yeah. with people. I think the best Punisher thing that I've ever seen. And I really like the 1980s one with with Dolph Lundgren, but like the best one was the short where he's where they got the guy, uh, Thomas Jane, I think it was, or an incredibly good lookalike. No, it was. And he just like goes to the laundromat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the best. I think it's just called Dirty Laundry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like that was perfect quintessential Punisher. I think it ends with him giving the Punisher shirt to some kid. Yeah. And then, like, cool <laughs> van, like. See, I, I enjoyed that, but to me, again, it was mostly personal preference. I'm like. That was a good TV show for somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Though I have to say, speaking of the, you know, I only kill bad guys. Um, last night, I listened to an audiobook of Casino Royale. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm just going to put forth the James Bond's definition, well, the people in James Bond's definition of evil is kind of hilarious. Yeah, what is it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> go, because, go on. So, for those of you who have seen Casino Royale, uh, you know that there is a torture sequence. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Involving oh, yeah. A, a wicker seated chair. Mm -hmm. uh, and that I is, in fact, in the book. Torture. And, uh, so afterwards, you know, once it's all over, like, it does address the fact that, like, obviously Bond is, you know, having some trauma over this, uh, mental and physical. Um, and so he talks to his friend, who's also an agent, and is like, dude, I think I'm gonna retire, because when I almost died, I realized I liked being alive, so I think I'm going to <laughs> be. And he's like, well, no, I mean, you talked about how you've only ever defeated, like, two monsters in your career well look at this guy he tried to turn you into a eunuch now that you've seen what true evil is don't you want to get out there and do the thing <laughs> it's like so we're basing like global evil <laughs> on what he did to one man's junk <laughs> like i'm not saying it was a nice act i'm not saying it was justified but, but like, perspective come on <laughs> hey man low bar low hey man, bar that masculine because security yeah. can go a long way I guess, but it's like, this guy wasn't even doing anything, like, horrid. It was the whole, like, oh, he embezzled, and now he's trying to make it up while gambling, and so now 007 has to out-gamble him so that he can't pay back the money to the Russians. Because the Russians could do something with it over there. Yeah, something. You don't something, even know what the Russians are doing to dicks, man. Uh, I... <laughs> Wait, what are they doing to Richard Grayson? One moment. That is an interesting way to consider like global power dynamics. Is like, Grandma, are you talking to me? what's the worst thing you guys have ever done to a dick? Grandma, <laughs> <laughs> we we judge society's a... morality by their treatment of penises. <laughs> I mean, it is a measurement, I suppose. Oh I, I don't think it's very uh, unbiased, but oh, you yeah, know. Is, is well, yeah, isn't to... that the thing is that you? Uh, that, you, that you judge morality by like the prison systems so, so this yeah. would just be like a, 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 a society should be judged a slight twist on that theory by the the way that you torture dicks yes that is the answer <laughs> is, i think it's like the, uh, some navajo tribe they had this thing called the sundance where basically they suspended you by your dick for like a day i stepped I'm, away for I'm, 10 I seconds feel like and they i come back win. to this that was voluntary, though, right? I mean, like, yeah, that was voluntary. That's true. Yeah. That's voluntary. But, like, you're out there, A, that's a painful experience. I mean, eventually, at some point, that you'd have to pass out or whatever. But, like, baking in the sun, too, like, Oof. that's just, like, extra injury. And then the sunburn effect afterwards would have to be horrible. So, for, like, you know, I'm ask, never going to um, see the Sundance kid the same episode? way. Are we in this episode, uh, are... Testicular Torture? I mean, <laughs> yes, that is the answer. Global power <laughs> dynamics and penis mutilation might be a better. Stephen, what have you brought out in us? <laughs> <laughs> I would say I we don't normally go down either of those. <laughs> I would say we don't normally go down this path, but I think we kind of do. Different paths, different. We paths. definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, we haven't even played Munchausen though. It's already it. already a thing. <laughs> All right, so um, I think the next one uh, is Kickstarters, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I. Uh, so the one. So the one I was listing, I found it interesting because their tagline was "Game Changing Dice," and I feel like that's overselling it. Oh, uh, I haven't commented on this shit. Go ahead. Oh no no I I I think it's overrated. What do you guys or uh, overstated? What do you guys think? Uh, I'm, I'm curious to know what the... conventions. That's it. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what is it? Can you, can you give me the? Yeah. the Hold on. There's the, a. I'll put it in the picture view. Mike, go, I, can't, I can't pull it up here. All right. <laughs> Mike, That's I, ridiculous. Mike, I can't, I, can't pull it up I mean, it, today. Oh, sorry. It sounds like a really, really strong. <laughs> it's just like tallies and asterisks and shapes instead of just straight up dots or numbers. But they also do dots. Yeah, it's just alternative counting solutions oh, on your okay. dice and they are stainless steel and brass so what's the what's the benefit that they're trying to uh, what's their case i that, why, why I is mean, this better I think their case is that we count the numbers differently like that's all i got okay out of that yeah i remember i think i'm, I think I'm with else. you <laughs> yeah 
Mm. Yeah, so I remember yelling about something else, really, not this, but another person was like, game changing, changing miniatures, and they were talking about how your game and your narrative in the video, they're like, the, your narrative will change because of the way you use these miniatures and this, that. It was the one we reviewed with the hands, that like the magnet hands, remember? Oh. <laughs> and I was just like, are you fucking kidding hands. me? Yeah. So this is like round two for me, like, are you kidding me? These dice are going to change the way I play games. The way I interact with my game experience. The people at my table will like or dislike me more based on the dice I use for this. What? What? Like, that's Fun weird fact, that it might change your experience because if you play at a place with a really nice table and you start rolling metal dice, <laughs> that will change your experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yelling. it's like, you can mix stainless steel and brass in the same game as well. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's strong marketing, for sure. <laughs> it, is, it is that. I will, I will give them that. If someone could type that with a straight face. I'm... Uh, dude, I worked in marketing for a few years. They can. Ugh. This is written as like par for the course, dude. Uh, I once got... I would have a really tough time. <laughs> with this, yeah. I had a um, I had a guy at one point write, I think it was another developer, sent me a message and they were like, the reason I don't like you is because you write uh, like a braggart speech or something when you write your answers. And I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I wrote exactly what's the thing. I didn't like be like, this will change your life forever. I'm like, I don't know. It's pretty cool. It can do this, that, and the other thing. Why don't you buy this product? And he was like, I don't like you because you wrote, you don't basically, it's like, I wrote, wrote like a little bit of a narrative to like one thing. And he was like, how dare you? I'm like, <laughs> yes, how dare I? <laughs> it's not, it's ad copy. Yeah, fuck me, right? Just That's, that's really stupid. It, but isn't it fun how like, those are the comments that really stick out in your mind for the rest of your life. And it was not like the, the hundred positive ones. Yep. Oh no, dude! Crazy. Like I, I'm sure that we've gotten like compliments on shit. I just do not remember any of them. But the yeah, yeah. so you didn't technically put the uh, the period after the number of skill points this class had, <laughs> and all the other ones did. I'm like, fucking god damn, really? <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> like, it haunts you. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and I did get that in a review once. Yeah, I mean, I, I've gotten things much like that. Like. I think okay. last week for uh, what is it? One umlaut, the umlauts in one name were not consistent throughout the book. <laughs> some of them were angled and some of them weren't, or something. Jeez. And I think I was just like, "Fuck you, theorist. Germany!" I, was, I don't even fucking care. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? You think I was talking about a different schemer? Like really? There's only one schemer <laughs> in the so book. Like, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't have the patience for it. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. Apparently, it worked on some people because they uh, their goal was one thousand dollars, and they have made eight thousand with twenty eight yeah. days to go. Uh, strong marketing works, uh, so you know you can't you can't you can't be like too <laughs> too, too irate Jeez. with them. Anyway. Um, yeah, my favorite Kickstarter I think I've ever seen was there's this one this guy was going to, and it was like written like a like a a like history channel special and it was like i will re reveal all the ufo information in that we've been asking for the mk like ultra stuff into this and the guy was dead 100 percent serious like I, he has websites he's been managing for like decades and stuff and you know much he that's awesome though how much, <laughs> how he much? Wanted for it yes 100 bucks <laughs> higher. ten thousand dollars higher a hundred thousand dollars higher a million. <laughs> yes, he wanted a million dollars. A million dollars. And I was, and like, people were like commenting, like, dude, I'll give you five, no. ten bucks for this. Like, put it down to a reasonable rate, and like, we'll, we'll actually do it. And he's like, no, this is what I need to protect my identity after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, so I'm like, release this. I'm burned. I got to move out of the country. That's what he's basically saying. We're like, dude, you have your address on your site. I need, like, I need retirement money. <laughs> For nothing uh, less will I divulge the secrets I know. But but see if there really is like a crazy government conspiracy out to kill people like that. As soon as he starts the Kickstarter experience, like he's done. Like like, like, like he's never getting that million dollars, even if he could raise the money. The dude has like, his address it just, it on his make website. Sense. Has his physical address <laughs> on his website. You know, like 
Like, yeah, you can't that, beat that. that. You really needed that help, too, I'm sure. Yeah. <sighs> oh, conspiracy theorists. Oh, conspiracy theorists. So, uh, I think this part of the show, uh, unless you guys have another Kickstarter. I got... Uh, I, I wanted to plug yeah. real quick yeah, yeah. Uh, the Creature Codex uh, by Copal Press for 5th edition monsters, just because, uh, you know, I, I, I do a lot of work with Copal Press, and everything I do is quality, and you know, I have the Tome of Beasts on my shelf, and it's awesome, so, you know, I'm, I'm sure that that is a worthy Kickstarter to back. If you need more 5th edition monsters, and who doesn't need more 5th edition monsters? It's true. Mike, you have, I, was, uh... I was. I was going to get my art stands from uh, was Jump Pack Six or Rocket Pack Six. I should know this. Uh, they're the people who did the D and D books. Jet Pack Seven. That's the name of their company. But anyway, at Gen Con, I got uh, huge art stands because they couldn't fit them into their their luggage, and I was driving oh. the van, so like I just took them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're doing another one. Uh, the last one was Gods and Goddesses, and this one is Masters and Minions. Um, it's got another, well, here's the codex one that he was talking about for folks in the Twitch room. And then Masters and Minions is this one. They are funded. They got 15 days left. They do great stuff. Beautiful artwork. They're nice people. And, uh, yeah. All good things. It's supposed to be a bunch of, like, uh, villains and then their, their lackeys. This is so, art. Uh, huh? And this is art? Uh, no, there, it's, a, it's a whole book. It's just it's the same artist studio that did the core books. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Orc. yeah. So it'll have like orc warlords and then their their orc lackeys and and so on and so forth. And that's yeah, that's all I got. <clears throat> so I think the uh, the next section, Stephen, we're gonna put you on the spot here. Um, whatever you want to talk about, what what, what topic do you, is just burning in your mind as the thing you have to talk about. That, but I'm going to add a caveat. It cannot involve testicular sure. torture at all. <laughs> well, now you're at all? <laughs> like not even yeah. tangentially? No, not even, like not even like testicular torture adjacent. Uh, Argo right. is you're off. You're being limits. so prudish, Scott. I know. What can I say? I'm a sensible young man. Uh, well, something that has been on my mind a lot recently, and this is actually this will be the the first public time I've talked about it. Uh. About two months ago, I was clinically diagnosed with ADHD, and, you know, it's apparently something that I've been suffering my whole life, uh, and it's been causing me a lot of problems. So, you know, I, I've just recently started going on medication and, like, actually learning a lot about ADHD. I had, the medication... Um... Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, please, please. Uh, the, the medication is helping me a lot, as I understand it. The medication helps a lot of people, and it's... Uh, I didn't really understand anything about it until I was told that I had it. Uh, and, you know, went in and took a bunch of tests and stuff. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those like weird things where a lot of people think that it's a myth or that it's just an excuse to get uh, uppers so that you can study all night in co college or, you know, sell them, sell them uh, around to people. And I, just from my limited experience, I have to say that uh, it's, it's very real. Uh, it's, it's something that just makes a lot of sense for me. And, and I, I think that you know, if, if you if you're willing, if you think that there's even a chance that you might have it, just go online, check out some information on it, and uh, really consider getting in and uh, talking to a clinical psychologist or a doctor to try to get some treatment for it. So when I was a kid, so I, I was I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD combined type. Mm -hmm. um, when I was my, I know it's one of those really overdiagnosed things in kids, but I you know it was there and then it was confirmed when I was in you know as a teenager and whatnot from a psychologist. Um, I went on medication for a while. I tried a bunch of different things, and it didn't really work out so good for me. Um, yeah, it's like twenty percent of people, as I, as I understand it, it doesn't it doesn't yeah, work very it, well for. It, it. it just puts me in a fo put me in a fog. It was just not mm -hmm. good. Um, so I have to uh, develop some techniques to. I've discussed them in the past on the show um, on how to kind of combat it. And it, it, it won't, won't say it's an asset, but you can you can learn some stuff. When I was doing my grad program. It was the hardest thing in the world. I was like actually looking for like neotropics and stuff to like try to like get myself to focus because it's like, all right, yeah. here's something your brain does not want to do. How do you get it to do it? Um, one of the tricks I always use is I have songs that I'll listen to that I've listened to a hundred mm -hmm. times, and I will loop that. Song. Yeah, yeah, same here. It'll be a three minute song or something, and I'll do like YouTube repeat, and it will be like you've listened to the song two hundred times, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. But it helps me keep mm -hmm. focused on different things. Yeah, um, yeah. It 
it did just varying strategies to it, I, I've I've done all these figured out all these like coping mechanisms over the course of my life uh, just to help me focus without ever realizing what I was yeah. trying to combat. Uh, I always thought there was just like this dozen different character weaknesses that I had that there was just uh, oh. no way no way that I could ever fix and that I, I was just going to hit a wall eventually and. And just finding out that that it's it's all one thing, and I can I can learn like t actual strategies that have been developed by people who really understand you know how the brain works, to, like exactly what you're saying, or and to, like listening to podcasts while I'm doing chores mm -hmm. just helps a lot because it engages that part of my brain that would normally just be bored to freaking tears doing the dishes. So I have what I call my external brains. Mm -hmm. Um. If I'm talking to someone and there's a topic I need to remember, I put out one finger. Um, so it ends up being just, I'll be walking around with one finger out. I'm like, why do I have one finger out? Oh, because of the mm -hmm. other tangential thing. Got it, got it, got it. Or I take That's smart. super extensive notes. Like I have a notepad mm -hmm. in like, like one of these yellow ones from Staples and I'll fill up like two thirds of it in like, like, like in a month. Like I'll go through almost a hundred pages in a month. I just keep notes at work, like, got to do this, got to do that. And I have a system with, like, checks and dashes that I use to keep the track of the order of those things. Mm -hmm. um, also priority lists. Um, but, yeah, there are lots of techniques out there that you have to kind of learn <clears throat> to cope with. And a lot of times I thought I would – I keep sometimes forgetting going, oh, yeah, this is just a thing for me. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a thing for a lot of people, and they use them. People talk about, like, the well, that's... spinners and stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't like the fidget spinner, but I do have fidgets. Like I said, right now I'm pulling a mm -hmm. baton around constantly. But yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, it, it feels like a lot of parallels to like you know, oh, finding out that you've had long-term major depression or long-term anxiety, or like, oh, hey, you know, I'm on the autism spectrum or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I, I was I was also diagnosed with uh, general anxiety and dysphoria, which is a type of long term depression, comorbid with the ADHD. Essentially, the ADHD was making me anxious and depressed all the time. That that so, sounds but, about right. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, like the medication is helping with those things, just just in general too, and and just you know figuring out tailored coping strategies, like putting everything into my calendar and everything into my notes and phone and stuff is is helping a lot. Um, one thing yeah, I, I think I was just overconfident before. <laughs> yeah. One thing I found was um, one of the reasons I got into production management and a lot of those mm -hmm. organizational techniques was because I was so lacking them mm -hmm. that when I started developing them and going, oh yeah, you just organize it like this and then you remind yourself to do this and you set this organizational thing and you can set like a milestone here and you have an auto update from your assembla and your whatever, people are like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, this is what I have to do to get through the day. Right. And they're like, Really? I'm like, yes, my brain doesn't work like yours, but so I'm just going to apply my brain to your team, my coping mechanism. It's going to open overcompensate for what you guys are doing, but you don't know you need it. And the team brain, which is really dumb because it's a team brain, needs it. So it's weird that we both found ourselves that's, that's in a, a really project cool manager perspective, perspective <laughs> you know? Uh, Dilver Cook in the Twitch chat says that everything that you are saying makes sense to him. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's good. good. Um, yeah, I think there's a ton of stigma about like talking about it and finding coping mechanisms and going on medication and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, it kind of like blew my brain whenever someone put it. It's like, you know, okay, I wear glasses. You know, could I operate without them? Well, yeah, I could, you know, look at things like this and I could get someone to drive me everywhere mm -hmm. and I could get used to cracking my shin on literally everything. But why would I do that? Why would I not just put on glasses and, like, help fix the problem? And, like, yeah. medicine isn't, like, you know, it's not a miracle cure, it doesn't work overnight, but, like, it's an option. It's a perfectly valid option. It, it just makes it easier to, mm -hmm. to figure out things that are going to work. And, uh, like, for example, I have, a, I have a really tough time talking to people. I have a, a really tough time doing podcasts and stuff like this, but... You know, and talking to people on the phone is something that becomes really difficult to me. But, but you know, the, the medication just makes it easier to, to do that or, to, you know, to, to motivate myself to do it. One thing that I'll, um, I'll say is the elephant in the room is overdiagnosis. 
-hmm. yes, there is overdiagnosis right and left, but I'd rather have 10 people be overdiagnosed than one person be underdiagnosed for this. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't manifest itself in the same way. If you look at the literature, there's lots of different things. Right. Um, that's why I mentioned ADHD combined type. Um, yeah, that is also what I am. Yeah, and it's and it's varying degrees. It's a spectrum. It's not like it's like everyone is severe and no one is. It's like either on or off. It's no. It's its own thing. Um, but overdiagnosis is not good. But mm -hmm. the lesser evil, and but over medication is. Again, do not self-diagnose and say, I have this thing. Right. You can act on that as your basis. Go, I think I have this thing. And then go see a professional yes, who's exactly. capable of diagnosing you. you. You need a professional to do this. You can't be like, yeah, yeah, I totally have this. Um, I'm going to self-medicate, and that's going to be a really yeah. terrible – you're going to have a bad time. I mean, it's, it can yeah, be I, a bad time when a professional is the one, like, giving you your dosages. Self-dosage. No, no. Mm -hmm. No. Well, and, and you know, the, the, the process of getting clinically diagnosed is difficult. I mean, it costs money. It required five hours of testing and, like, three different meetings with a psychologist. Mm. So, I mean, like, it's it's a process. And, but, you know, it, it's it's necessary to have that hurdle so that you avoid, you know, people being... Like, like, you know, everyone who's like, oh, I have OCD when they probably don't have OCD. You're just, you know, you like to clean. It's, <laughs> there's a, there's a slight difference between that and mm -hmm. one and the other. All right. Um, Steve, I think that just about wraps up where we want to be tonight. Um, okay. Yeah. So are we, uh, thanks for coming on. That was, that was a blast. It was good to talk to you about that last subject too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I really appreciate coming on and yeah. I'm happy to come back anytime you guys need a, Need, need somebody to fill in or, you know. You know yeah, we can be serious. We don't just talk about dick torture. I mean, we do, but. Uh, yeah, but not only. <laughs> we can be legit. Mike, any and, you know, if you think about it, historically, a lot of torture tools are, are like, very much about the phallus. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I guess our, our next book is going to be a collaborative effort between all four of us. It's called <laughs> Dick Torture in the 16th Century, uh, Rules no. for Torturing in Pathfinder. No. Yeah. Oh. I, I, Phallic I, I Torturing and Global I Power that. Dynamics. I'm okay, yeah, I can you. see that. Could we do it for 5e because um, <laughs> my warlock specifically has Torture's implements? Yeah. And I want to get the most out of them. I do have rules for torture, but not for dick torture. That's it. We, That's we, right. We, I feel like <laughs> That's it. We, we, have, we have torture rules, too. I think that we can kind of put our heads together and uh, come up with something. <laughs> and with that wonderful note, guys, thanks for coming to join us. Um, see you in the future. Maybe, maybe we will uh, be better, but probably not. Have a nice night.